Hi, uh, welcome to another lecture on uh, linear algebra. We are going to continue our conversation about uh, direct methods for solving linear systems, that's section 2.2. Uh, today we are going to look at a web app that's going to help us carry out the steps. Let's go ahead, take a look at uh, the problem again. So. <clears throat> Uh, same title as the last time, except that now we are going to see what is out there to help us carry out the steps. Let's see what was uh, the topic last time. So let's go take a look at that lecture. We had a long list of basic ideas, and uh, we tried to explain this in the context of an example. So we had a linear system, four equations, five unknowns converted to a matrix, so-called augmented matrix. Then we said we are going to try to create that triangular form we were talking about in the lecture prior to that. So in the lecture prior to that we said if you have a system that the bottom elements in this triangular form has been converted to zero, the life will is going to be easy. You start from the last uh, entry and work your way back up. We had the back substitution. Well, when we try to carry this thing out, we don't always get uh, this perfect triangular look. Instead, what we get is something called the echelon form. So that's what we tried to do in uh, this case. First of all, how do you get your triangular form? We said we declare a non-zero entry as a pivot, and then we try to clean out the numbers below or above it. So this was our pivot, and these are our targets. We use the pivot to eliminate the target elements. How do we do that? By simply multiplying our pivot row by a number and adding it to the target row. All the numbers are going to change. Uh, there's a multiplier. The multiplier is made out of target divided by pivot negative. So negative of target over the pivot is our multiplier. Multiply by the pivot row, add to the target row, and then that's going to ensure a zero for us here. And then uh, we carry it out for each of and the entries below our pivot entry. Well, uh, the name of this operation was addition. It was one of the so-called elementary row operations. We carried out, we have created our zeros, we come to our sub matrix, repeat the process again, except we cannot use a zero as a pivot because it cannot change anything. So we have to bring one of the other entries in the location of the pivot. That operation by itself was another uh, elementary row operation. We call it exchange or swap or shuffle, whatever you want to call it. So we said one of these two entries has to be brought to this location. We brought uh, minus one to this location. So the uh, the operation was called R2 exchange with R3. We brought this uh, third row to the second, and the second went to the third entry. Now, this is going to be our pivot, and then we are going to use that to uh, eliminate entries below it. We could also use it to eliminate entries above it. Well, we carry this thing out. We eliminated the 3. Now it's 3R2 plus R4 that's going to turn this one into a 0. Now I have two zeros here. Uh, my last row now has these numbers. To proceed uh, in the next uh, level, we said we have to use this 8 as our pivot to eliminate 29. We can do it in a single soup or we can do it in two steps. Uh, if you want to do it in two steps, perhaps that's going to be easier on, on, on the eye. We take this and just divide it by 8. We call that the multiplication operation. You're multiplying by 1 eighth, or divide by 8 if you wish. So that makes the uh, pivot to be 1. 
a pivot that's one is always a lot more attractive than anything else also helps us to create a unique answer anyway once we have this pivot we can use it to eliminate the entry below that so what happened now is that instead of that perfect looking uh, triangle we accidentally the next entry has become zero as well well that's going to create a bit of a headache for us we have to uh, modify our steps in a certain way the peculiar uh, pattern that we have created here is called row echelon form row echelon uh, we had the concept of a leading entry the leading entry is the first non-zero entry of each row the leading entries have to march toward right that is every leading entry below is to the right of the one above it it would have been nice if there was always one single step but sometimes it could be two or three steps until you hit the next uh, uh, non-zero entry okay so in, in the last step here we took uh, this row and divided also by 24 to make this pivot to be one then we said at this stage you have two choices one to solve this uh, resulting system by back substitution or perhaps better is to continue the style that we have and eliminate the entries uh, above our pivots and that's going to be uh, equivalent to back substitution without uh, writing as much so this is preferred for uh, this uh, medium sized uh, problems that we are looking at so this is going to be our pivot I'm going to uh, take these entries above it convert them to zero just as before we have three elementary operations to carry out to convert this thing into zero then comes this equation let's uh, see what does this look like remember this was x y z u and w so this is really reading uh, z this equation here let me try it this is really reading z plus uh, u is equal to 1 so remember this was x this was y this was z uh, this one we had I guess called the u and this was w and this was our right hand side so this equation really reads 1z plus 1u is equal to 1 okay that obviously has infinitely uh, many solutions uh, what do we do we have to decide which one of these things is going to be the parameter and which one of them is going to be depending on that parameter so the convention is and the last item that is written is going to be declared as the parameter so u is going to be the parameter and z is going to depend on that so uh, we brought it uh, to the following stage that uh, we leave this entry alone we go to the leading entry and use that to eliminate entries above it so this one is going to be left out the leading entry our pivot entry is going to be used to eliminate the entries above it so that's what happened here one last stage there is still a two here I'm going to use this minus one to eliminate that one uh, very final cleanup we are going to insist all of our pivots to be one okay all of our pivots is going to be one everything above and below pivots have to be zero by now and there could be these straight characters if you wish so what we have now is this matrix uh, this is called a reduced row echelon form the great thing about the reduced row echelon form is that first of all it's going to provide our solution very easily there's not much left like 99 percent of the problem is already done another item that's important about reduced row echelon form is that it is unique uh, that echelon by itself is not unique because if you add any of the lower rows to the upper rows that is still echelon so different students can end up with different echelon matrices and all of them will be correct great thing about the reduced row echelon form is that uh, all the students who start on this will end up by the same answer so you can actually compare notes from one to the other that they have to be all same 
So we said 99% of the problem is done here. What's the 1% that's left? <coughs> the variable that's not associated with the leading entry, that has to be declared as a parameter. So we take it to the right hand side. So the U was not associated with one of these yellow leading entry items. Entire column of U's comes to the right hand side. So I take this and bring it to the right hand side. Let me color it that you see it, it came to the right hand side. So this came to the right hand side. Now the custom in many of these textbooks is to use certain letters for for the parameters to signal to ourselves that well we have a parameter and uh, traditionally letters like T and S and such have been reserved for that. So long as you use a letter other than the ones you have here you're okay. Let's just stick to the book's tradition. U is equal to T. So this is going to be written in this style. It's exactly the same thing. It's just that we are using the letter T. Now finally we wrap it up in a, a vector format. The starting values is these numbers and then multiples of T comes into another column. And what does this remind us? This reminds us of equation of a line except that there are five variables here so it means we are a five we are in a five dimensional space the uh, the original equation that we were solving was uh, something written in five dimension the solution of that is a is a line in that five dimensional thing now if you remember the lecture before this i tried to prepare you for three uh, culture shocks in linear algebra. One we said is a curse of dimensionality. That there are just so many numbers to look at. Like you have two dozen numbers here and I bet in calculus one you never came across a problem that starts with two dozen numbers. So we have a curse of dimensionality. Then we have the next curse which is uh, in pretty much all the problems in calculus one you're looking for one number. Here's an X, here's a Y, for example, maximum point, minimum point, stuff like that. And all of a sudden here we come across infinite solution sets. So infinite solution sets, there's always a parameter in it. And that, that's what opens the door to infinity in our situation. Then we said there is a third uh, curse as well. Sometimes you come across problems that don't have a solution. And we said actually that's uh, perhaps the most important one for the engineers going to their uh, labs and such. You try to fit your data to a perfect uh, formula and there is almost uh, never a perfect agreement. You have to go for the next best thing that is make a compromise, that so-called compromise solution. In engineering you call it the least square fit or the best fit or something. Uh, well let's leave that for your next uh, course in linear algebra we probably wouldn't have time for that okay so regarding uh, the first curse of linear algebra which is uh, well look I had to write this thing for half an hour or something and that writing itself and the writing and the arithmetic we have to do the arithmetic that we have to do especially this addition operation yeah uh, the writing is error prone and this step is also error prone so you have to always double check yourself and guard against errors and such so we said you always check on the very first stage that you start writing check you see that you have the right uh, numbers to begin with and then uh, there's nothing other than being uh, super careful with these steps because every error is going to propagate and it's going to be rather uh, painful to deal with so, uh, so what is, uh, what's the solution? Can we reduce the number of steps? Not really. Uh, uh, the number of steps in this type of problems is proportional to the cube of the size of the problem. So for example, if you have a 10 by 10 uh, uh, equation, and then you want to solve it. The number of arithmetic steps involved in that is going to be 700, about 700 steps, addition and multiplication and so on. 
well, that doesn't sound uh, all that fun. It kind of looks like a punishment uh, than uh, more than uh, mathematics. Well, uh, perhaps it reminds you of this when uh, uh, Bart Simpson had to write something on the board every time, and linear algebra sometimes feels like that. So let's see if we can uh, ease the pain on you a little bit. So that what we are going to do is to separate the arithmetic that you had to do. So here, even uh, for this small size problem, we had to do a substantial number of uh, basic arithmetic. Yes, it's basic, but it's just so much of it. And uh, in the writing itself. So uh, what is the solution? Of course, the solution is to use a software. There are three types of software that are out there. Uh, some of them, you enter the problem, press a button, and out comes the solution. Well, that's good for uh, advanced class. After you have learned this thing, maybe you use that software to help you solve something, but that's not suitable for us, and we are going to uh, not advertise them or use them in this class. What's the next best thing? Next best thing is that there's some software that, uh, well, shows you all the steps. One way or another shows you all the steps. And uh, you are just uh, watching it and perhaps you use it to check your solution. There's a third category of uh, uh, software is out there that is going to lighten your burden but expects you to do the operation. So when we started this course, we said you're signing up for a mountain climbing expedition. You're not signing up for an Uber ride or something. So that the very first uh, uh, software that's out there, press a button and is an announcer, that's the Uber ride. That's, uh, we are not, that, that's not suitable for us. We are going to go take a look at what's available out there. So let's go see what's available. So how can we relieve Bart from this pain? Uh, surprisingly, there are very few software out there uh, of the category that we want to take a look at. Uh, the original one was by uh, Dan Grise, I guess his name. He is both a mathematician and an artist. Uh, I want to suggest that you go and take a look at his work. Uh, he had uh, a so-called simple row reducer that would uh, take you through all the steps and uh, help you do the arithmetic. You have to decide what operation that you're going to use, but then it's going to carry out the operations for you. So the pain was taken off the problem. Unfortunately, this was a, uh, Adobe Flash based, so it doesn't work anymore. So we have to go to the next best thing. There are two, uh, I can only find two others. One is by uh, 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 Michael Eisenman. I guess in uh, Stuttgart University in, uh, in Germany. And the other one is uh, in NC Lab software. Uh, Pavel Solin has one that uh, is going to do the arithmetic for us. I've chosen this one to, for, to use for our course. So you're allowed to use this in, uh, on the exam. Uh, I suggest that you try to do all the small problems by hand so that you understand what's going on. And then if you want to uh, some additional help to carry out the steps, uh, let's go and see how this one is going to do the job. So you see that uh, when you bring up this page, there is a matrix here, it's a three by three, uh, nothing in it yet. And then um, if you want to prepare it for our work. There could be one of two type of problems you want to do. Either the problem is given to you and then you want to solve it, in which case we start with the edit. Sometimes you want to just start with any random problem, in which case you are going to use some of these other keys. So uh, pretty much all the times you are starting with some specific problem. So let's see how does that work. So step number one, we click on edit it converts to resume. So let's edit. Okay, it becomes resume. First, you decide how many rows and how many columns you want. So in the previous problem that we were doing last time, there were four rows and uh, well, there were six columns, I guess, so four. 
So as soon as you click outside, it becomes four. And there were six columns, so I say six. Uh, so this was the size of the problem we had. Uh, uh, this entry can be modified as well, but right now we don't have use for it. So we are going to uh, click on resume um, in order to be able to uh, uh, do some work with this matrix. So I come here and uh, what was our data? So this one was one, I believe. Let me see. I guess I still have to go here. So sorry for that. So uh, I went back to edit to enter my numbers. So first number was one. Now you use tab to go forward. So next number was two. Next number was minus four. By the way, you're just limited to uh, whole numbers. Fractions can be handled if you convert all denominators to the same number and then this will be your denominator. So we have that limitation that for example you cannot put radical 2 here or x here or something. It's just integers, whole numbers. So 5 then was 1. Just continue pressing tab and they uh, enter your number 0, 0. This was 2, this was 2, uh, 2, uh, 3, 2, 1, 5, 1, minus 1, 1, 3, 6, 5, and the last number was 26. Okay, so after we clicked on edit, we adjusted the size, uh, entered all of our numbers, and Again, the same advice as before, you're entering 24 numbers, chances are something was entered incorrectly. So you scan this thing one more time to make sure everything's correct before you start, even though this software is going to be quite helpful for us, even though uh, you, you go through it, if a mistake has been made, you have to start all over again. So you always go and double check before you start the process. So that's what I'm doing right now to make sure that uh, my numbers are exactly the numbers I had uh, in the in this lecture. Huh? So so we had I entered these numbers on that uh, on that app. So now I go back to the app. I'm satisfied I got the right numbers. I click on resume again. Okay. Now you remember what was the game? The game was to eliminate. So it's a Gaussian elimination. Uh, he's calling Gale, or I don't know how he's supposed to read that uh, uh, special name for this. So, uh, so we said uh, this is going to be our pivot. These are going to be our targets. Now, this uh, app is going to make it. Uh, very easy on us, almost going to make us uh, become a bit lazy. Uh, so we are going to click on our uh, pivot and then on the target. And then the target is going to be eliminated. Let's see. Click. This is my pivot. This is my target. You, you saw it just converted uh, this entry into zero. And here it records for you what it did. It says the row 2 that you see now is the old row 2 minus twice row 1. So it records for you what it did. Let's, uh, let's go eliminate this 2 again. You have to click your pivot every time. So I click the pivot, it becomes green, then I click the target. So it tells me it did R3 minus 2R1 to eliminate this. And then uh, pivot target. Okay, so we uh, finished with the first uh, row of operation. Uh, so let's just go and uh, compare against what we had here. So we had these three operations to carry out by hand there. And then we did it. And well, at the cost of handling 18 numbers here, and we converted these things to into zero and we are concentrating on this sub, sub matrix. So let's go back to this 
let's go back to where was it uh, okay we said we insist that our pivots appear in a kind of a cascade we don't want to create a gap between them just for having a standard presentation so we said the cure for this situation is to swap you have an option to swap two and three or option uh, row two and row four either one is fine how do we uh, swap two rows you click on the row and the other row you saw what happened when you uh, click on the row numbers it swaps the the entire row for you so what happened was here it says R2 and R3 are swapped now this is going to be our pivot nothing to do here this is going to be my target so pivot target so it converted that one to zero as well the operation is recorded for me down here uh, three times R2 was added to R4 to do this now last time we said uh, one of the operation is scaling like divide or multiply a row by number so that it starts with one so you go ahead and click on the on the item that you want to convert to one so that is then you click on the row row number it's going to divide it by eight okay you saw so here is a new operation r3 uh, became one eighth of what it was okay now this is my new uh, pivot i'm going to use this thing to eliminate this entry so uh, pivot target both of these things became zero which is uh, the beginning of a headache we had over there that's not just perfect triangle rather it's uh, well crooked triangle if you wish to make this one into a one we said we always prefer our pivots to be one so uh, click and click on the row number it converts it to one then we said above the pivots have to be cleaned out too we could have done it while we were coming down but that turns out to be a bit of a wasteful operation uh, the better thing conceptually uh, is to start from the end and work our way back up now of course the computer is doing everything for you so you don't sense how much energy is being consumed by that but uh, uh, well there is an advantage to go this way because what's the advantage in these zeros here uh, when you are adding from bottom to top uh, you don't need to spend any energy adding zero to anything so the number of additions you carry out this phase is going to be less anyway so this is going to be our pivot and then we are going to eliminate these entry above it let me re remind you what we did last time let's see if i can convince this to move now okay so this was our pivot and then we eliminated the entries above it by uh, these operation let's just go ahead and carry that out uh, let's see where it was so you click on what's going to be your pivot and then it does that again you have to click on pivot every time you want to use it uh, there's no shortcut for like here's a pivot do the entire column for me perhaps you write uh, that kind of a software that's going to make us even lazier okay then we came to this uh, critical situation we said we have this was what the z plus u equal to one one of these entries has to become parameter the other one is going to follow suit and it's going to be called dependent variable so the tradition has it that we go from right to left the very first item that can be made into a parameter is going to be made into a parameter okay the way we are going to standardize we are going to do it like this not any other way okay so this uh, u becomes a parameter so we leave this alone we go to uh, this entry another way to remember what's happening is that we said we call these entries uh, the leading entries leading entry was the first non-zero entry of every row 
the variables connected to those leading entries are going to be our dependent variable. Everybody else is going to become free uh, parameters. So we come to this leading entry, click on that, eliminate item above it. Click on this, eliminate the item above it. Finally, this pivot, I use this to eliminate item above it. One last thing, uh, instead of a minus one, we insist to make this thing into a one. The way we do that is by dividing by minus one. How did we do that? We took this, click on the uh, row number. Okay, what we got now was the end of what we achieved last time. We have one as the leading entry. This is a leading entry. All the other entries on the columns that have the leading entry have been converted to zero. Okay, so that's the holy grail of Gauss-Jordan method. The resulting thing is called the reduced row echelon form and it is unique. The great thing about this thing is unique. And uh, next item is that 99% of the problems all done. We leave these uh, leading entries alone. The other columns will be moved to the right hand side. So past this, you have to actually write and uh, do what we did at the end of the, uh, uh, the previous lecture. So by the time that you have arrived at that stage, this is what you have created okay so reduced row echelon form the holy grail of all that operation is this so 99 problem is done 99 percent what is left you identify the leading entries those are your dependent variables all the other columns go to the right hand side so we took this wholesale we brought it to the light right hand side then to follow the tradition of in the textbook this variable as a parameter is assigned letters like T and S and such so we use the letter T here these are all replaced by T uh, we remind ourselves U itself is T and the final answer that we write has all of our five variables written in terms of a bunch of um, vectors and then we can tell everything about our solution at that stage. Okay, so uh, so I want you to do the following: uh, do each problem first by hand, and then uh, second time around with this software. Make sure you agree. Perhaps go step uh, one step by hand, one step by this. Make sure you catch your errors. So do not give up on doing the arithmetic. Learning mathematics, just doing getting your hand dirty with some sort of calculation. And you don't want to just delegate something to a computer to do it for you. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, hopefully this is going to lighten the pain. Again, we said there are three uh, culture shocks in linear algebra. You want to just uh, be proactive, not let yourself to have these mental blocks that is going to destroy the rest of the semester for you. Okay, uh, block number one, there are lots of numbers in each problem. Well, there's no, nothing you can do about that. Uh, our word is a complicated word. There's piles of data to deal with, so we have to deal with them. Uh, we have to uh, find ways of handling that data so this type of software is going to help us with that uh, mental block number two was uh, our final answers are not going to be just like x is one y is equal to five and, and those are good old days that are mostly gone now uh, typically more often than not we our final answer is a curve or a surface or something something more complicated than just a point or a number and that is going to manifest itself to us by a, a, a collection of uh, solutions so we have a so-called solution set so our solution set uh, customarily we come across answers like this that is the answer to the problem and we said culture shock number three 
uh, you're going to see it in uh, future classes uh, actually the most applicable situation finding the uh, best fit to a set of equation that doesn't have a solution okay uh, so let me cut this thing short and uh, hopefully you go and practice uh, that uh, uh, your problems both by hand and by the software make sure they agree on all exams you can use the software only this page though uh, no. so what I want you to do is that on on the on the exams I want you to give me a record of the matrices you actually generated okay so uh, you every time you process a column after you're done with all the entries of a column you rewrite the matrix for me just like what we did here so your record for the exams gonna be like the record that you see here so I know that you actually uh, did the did the work and uh, the software is doing the arithmetic for you okay until next time good luck and God bless.